Um, when management improves, as it has here, you can figure out better if you're being cheated, so you should see more decentralization. And that's very important because one of the things we've found is that, um, well, one of the things that's been found around the world is that a lot of the effects of competition come through reallocation. Uh, business being moved from weak, bad firms to good firms. Good firms expanding, poor firms going out of business. And that's, that mechanism requires that the well-managed firms can grow. And if they, won't de if they won't delegate, they can't grow. There's limits on the, on the owner's time. So what we found was decentralization did increase. The right-hand dots are all treatment firms. The left-hand dots are almost all control firms. Um, and there's regressions. They, don't, they have a one triple star. There's another two. So uh, actually, we measured decentralization along, three, uh, along six dimensions. The one that really changed and drove everything was the extent to which um, the, manage, the owners uh, al allowed the, the uh, uh, how to best put this? But basically, to the extent that, the, that there was uh, any feedback and any uh, involvement of the frontline managers in decisions, rather than simply being made by the directors themselves and how much the directors to what extent did managers talk to each other versus only talk to the director? It also led to a lot more use of computers, which probably isn't surprising. If we uh, had them computerize their uh, records, so it's natural that more people were looking at the computer output and using computers. But it does appear that better management is a, a type of skill bias technical change. And here's computerization, and again, the. The uh, firms on the right are the, the largely the, the treatment firms. The firms on the left are the control firms. And it's the change in the computerization index. So if you can increase your profits by something between 16% and, and 130%, and it's doing things as cheap as what we were talking about, Okay. This, this wasn't, there was minimal investment required for any of these changes. Why on earth didn't it happen long ago? And so we asked the consultants to, to scope that out. And uh, they talked to the owners and the managers and the workers. They observed the factory. They had their own experience. And my colleagues visited the plants themselves and the answer is largely they didn't know. They weren't aware of the practice. They'd never heard of keeping track of, of, and of uh, downtime and figuring out why it was occurring. Um, that's, that for, uh, before the intervention, that accounted for 40% of the things that weren't being done that we thought should be done. Another 30% came from basically the, the managers had heard about it, but they didn't, they miscalculated how effective it would be in their firms. They said, yeah, I've heard about that, but we don't need that, it won't help us. And then what this table shows is how it moves over time. After, you know, after we tell them about it, it's no longer lack of information, but it's more likely to be that they just don't believe us but we get them to do some things and they work and they start believing us and start doing other things. So this is the transition matrix. So basically it's lack of information. But why didn't competition drive these shoddy companies out of business? You know, in America there aren't companies like this. They, they get driven out of the business. Uh, and part of it is that bankruptcy isn't a threat. 
at Weaver wages of $5 a day, these firms can make money, and they do make money. Uh, and they, many of them manage to send their kids to school in, in America and whatnot. Um, owner's time is constrained, and they can't do, they can't make enough decisions and collect enough information to run many plants, so they can't grow. Um, for in fact, uh, as I point out here, uh, firm size is more linked to the number of male family members, correlation of 0.69, than, who are trusted to be given managerial position than it is to the management quality, which only has a correlation of 0.22. And there just isn't a lot of entry either. Um, it takes about 13 million in assets to get into this business, and there's no guarantee that you're going to be any better than anybody else. Now, there are, of course, great managers in India, but they tend to work for the multinationals, whether Indian or, or uh, domestic whether Indian or foreign. And there's very little movement. Uh, almost nobody in these firms has actual management training, and almost none of them have worked in, in well-managed firms. So the, the mechanism and the consulting's not there either. Um, you may wonder why they don't hire consultants if it, they don't know they need them. You know, they think they're, they don't realize they're badly run. So in summary, firms in developing countries often have very poor management, which lowers their productivity, lack of information and limited CEO ability, and some element of procrastination are part of it. Uh, what conclusions do we draw? Well, not that India should hire six times 10 million uh, Accenture consultants and send them into all the different factories. I don't think that'll work. Um, and it's a little expensive. I think um, encouraging uh, product market competition, encouraging foreign multinationals who are typically well managed would help. Uh, it wouldn't do much in textiles, but it would in some other industries. Improving the look rule of law so people can trust managers, uh, outside managers, uh, which will allow reallocation, and improve basic training around management skills. Um, not MBAs. I don't think MBAs know about this stuff. Uh, I don't think, well, maybe they get it in their operations classes, but but it's it's so trivial that that uh, they uh, probably, they and their professors would disdain it, but it could make, could make a huge difference. Finally, not to pick on the Indians, we've got a team that involves uh, American-based Brits and whatnot, so not to pick on the Indians, there's one country that even exports TV shows about how bad their managers are, and it's, uh, David Brent from The Office and Basil Fawlty from Fawlty Towers. So um, I think I'll stop there, if that's okay. Okay, and I'd be delighted to take your comments or questions or or I can show you more slides. Questions? <laughs> this, this is a picture of a, of a warping beam being loaded in 1854 in Massachusetts. The technology has not changed much. It's about the same. Um, that's to drive you crazy. That's, to that's how to figure out uh, what to blame for them not having done the, the, the thing you wanted them to do. It's a flow chart. There's more. <laughs> but please, questions? <laughs> 